it's normal going into surgery to be concerned about management of postoperative pain. I wanted to take a moment to talk about how we best manage postoperative pain. Management of postoperative pain needs to be thought about holistically. So we need to think about preparation before surgery and then what to do after surgery. I think it's critically important to focus on your preoperative nutrition, for example, on strengthening your muscles. Also your preoperative mindset going in, kind of having a game plan because if patients have anxiety in the postoperative period associated with pain, then the pain is amplified by the anxiety. So sort of having a little bit of a game plan in your mind going into surgery. After surgery, we emphasize a principle that we call mindful movement. Movement's good for healing. Mindfulness would be to be uh, in the moment and to not aggravate things because you're paying attention to what you're doing. Mindfulness is also a way to minimize anxiety. Another effective thing can be icing the area uh, or around the area of pain from surgery. We provide braces for some of our surgeries. And I sort of jokingly say the brace is for comfort and sympathy, but the brace can also just simply be very helpful for, for pain uh, and for management of pain. So let's take a moment now and focus specifically on the medications that we use. Uh, the principle here is to use a variety of medications to maximize the benefit, but minimize the risk and the side effects of the medications. And we think about medications in classes. So the first group of medications would be Tylenol, basically. And I like Tylenol because it has a low side effect profile and it can be a nice foundation for pain management. So Patients will say, well, Tylenol doesn't work for me. And I would argue, well, maybe it helps 5%, 10%. And if you take Tylenol on a regular basis after surgery, your risk is low and you get an, a little bit of additional or foundational pain management. The next group of medications are called NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. NSAIDs would include medications like ibuprofen. NSAIDs can affect the stomach and they can also affect the kidneys. So patients with bad kidneys probably should not be taking NSAIDs. We oftentimes use Celebrex postoperatively because it's easier on the stomach than ibuprofen. One of the downsides of NSAIDs is taken long-term, they can affect fusion rates. So we usually after a fusion would prescribe NSAIDs for a couple of weeks and then advise the patients to stop them. If you haven't had a fusion, NSAIDs could be taken longer. The next class of medications would be muscle relaxants. And there's a variety of muscle relaxants that we use, Flexeril, Cyclobenzaprine, uh, Methylcarbamol, uh, or Robaxin. Muscle relaxants are nice because they can provide significant pain relief. And one of the principal causes of pain after surgery is muscle spasm. Muscle relaxants can be sedating, so you have to be a little bit careful there. Some of the muscle relaxants can act as anxiolytics or anxiety medications like Valium, for example. Those medications can be more um, prone to patients having a hard time getting off of them, so we are very careful about using Valium long-term. The next class of medications would be opiates. Uh, this would include tramadol, which is a more mild opiate, or we oftentimes use oxycodone. Uh, opiates should be taken at the smallest effective dose for the shortest period of time. Opiates do have the highest risk profile, but can also be very effective for nociceptive or post-surgical pain. And it's okay to take opiates, but at the same time, we wanna be very cautious with our use of opiates. Some patients may elect to not use opiates at all, and that is perfectly reasonable. Another class of medications is medications like that are related to cannabis um, uh, and CBD. And we get often asked, is that okay to use? And I would say, we do not prescribe that, but it's perfectly fine. And if that's helpful for you, you can make that as a personal decision on what to do. Uh, another group is steroids. Patients that come back and are having an inflammatory response, creating some radiculitis, or maybe you've had a disc, discectomy and um, the pain was better for a little while and then it's kind of flared up again, 
sometimes a, a course of a short course of steroids can be very helpful. We've consulted with uh, a lot of colleagues on our pain management regimen, and we've scoured the literature and we've had a fair amount of clinical experience at this point. I would provide some reassurance that by and large, patients do very well postoperatively with pain management. It's not going to be pain-free, and that's not a goal. We want it to be safe and effective. Uh, and I think that if you go into surgery with a game plan and utilize a variety of things rather than re relying on one thing, like the worst thing to do with pain management is rely solely on narcotics. That's the only thing that you do to manage pain. I think if you do that, you're likely to have a good and safe way of managing postoperative pain and get through the postoperative period without disrupting your life much and then get back to regular activities uh, quickly uh, without surgery being too disruptive uh, to your life.